Queen Elizabeth has conducted her first in-person royal duty after her husband, Prince Philip, passed away on Friday. A royal expert has claimed the Queen's remarkable resilience would have delighted the Duke of Edinburgh. The Queen, 94, displayed extraordinary resilience by returning to work just for days after her husband of 73 years Prince Philip passed away last Friday. Despite being in an official two-week mourning period, the Queen put royal duty first to carry out an important engagement. The Queen hosted an audience with the Earl Peel as he formally stood down as Lord Chamberlain on Tuesday, during a private event held at Windsor Castle, the Queen accepted her former royal aide's wand and office insignia. The Earl had overseen the arrangements for the Duke's funeral, known as Operation Fourth Bridge. He had handed responsibility for the operation to his successor, former MI5 spy chief Andrew Parker, just a week before Prince Philip died at Windsor Castle. The Lord Chamberlain's office, led by the Queen's controller, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Vernon, is tasked with the practical side of the service on Saturday. Though the royal family is observing a two-week mourning period for the late Duke of Edinburgh, an official acknowledged that the group will continue undertaking engagements appropriate to the circumstances. One imagines that, had the Queen wanted to, yesterday's audience to mark the retirement of the former Lord Chamberlain could have been postponed until the period of royal mourning was ended. But that is not her way. In an interview with the BBC, the former Prime Minister John Major said he hoped the Queen would be given time and privacy. I know she is the monarch. I know she has responsibilities, but she has earned the right to have a period of privacy in which to grieve with her family, he commented. Few would disagree but the Queen has a work ethic and commitment to duty and service which she has always placed above all other considerations. According to the Daily Mail, sources have suggested that Her Majesty is planning to fulfill as many commitments as possible once her official mourning period ends later this month. There will also reportedly be a concerted effort from her family to support her as she does this. Senior members of the royal family are set to support the Queen during some events and future engagements include, Prince Charles, Camilla, Prince William and his wife Kate Middleton, Prince Edward and Sophie Wessex, with Princess Anne. According to a source claimed, the Duke of Edinburgh is irreplaceable and the Queen's dedication to duty is undiminished. But senior officials and members of the family have long had an eye on ensuring she is more supported in the future and it seems sensible to start employing this now. The Queen has entered into an official mourning period following Prince Philip's death. This is set to end on the 22nd of April, the day after she celebrates her 95th birthday. With the royal family currently preparing for Prince Philip's funeral, Buckingham Palace is set to release more details about the funeral including the guest list, in the next 48 hours. Only 30 people are set to attend the funeral, which will comply with UK social distancing, and even the Queen wearing a face mask. Members of the royal family will have to be at least 2 metres apart during the service at St George's Chapel in Windsor on Saturday. But, who will attend Prince Philip's funeral and here's a list of those who will be participating in royal funeral. Queen Elizabeth and the Queen's four children and their partners will all attend the ceremony, it's expected. This includes Charles, Prince of Wales and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, Princess and Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence, Prince Andrew, and the Earl and Countess of Wessex. Prince Philip's eight grandchildren will all be there too, it is understood. The Duke and Queen's grandchildren are, Peter Phillips, Zara Tyndall, Prince William, Prince Harry, Princess Beatrice, Princess Eugenie, Lady Louise Windsor and James, Viscount Seven. Prince William's wife, Kate, Duchess of Cambridge, will certainly be in attendance given her close connection to the family. Another royal spouse likely to be in attendance is Princess Eugenie's husband, Jack Brooksbank. Zara Tyndall's husband, Mike Tyndall, Princess Beatrice's husband. Eduardo Mapelli Mozzi. The great grandchildren are Savannah and Isla Phillips, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, Prince Louis, Mia, Lena and Lucas Tyndall, Archie Mountbatten Windsor, and August Brooks Bank.
the televised royal funeral will be held at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle and taking place at 3 p.m. on Saturday the 17th of April. There will be no public access and while a procession will take place within the grounds of the castle, from the Duke's resting place to the chapel, there will be no way of seeing anything from outside the castle. Consequently, the royal family has asked that members of the public do not visit Windsor on the day, but instead watch the funeral, which will be broadcast on TV. In line with his wishes for a no-fuss funeral, the Duke of Edinburgh will not lie in state. But Prince Philip's final wish will be granted. The purpose-built Land Rover that will be used during Saturday's procession was specially modified to carry a coffin in a project that the Duke helped with many years ago. It is a fitting tribute to the 99-year-old Duke of Edinburgh, the nation's longest consort, who was known for his practical skills and his enduring interest in design and engineering. For more than 70 years, Prince Philip was right there. He was a few steps behind and perhaps sometimes a little out of line, but always there supporting his wife and queen. Without him, the queen says there is a huge void in her life and it's a place in her inner circle that cannot be easily filled. Prince Philip was the only man in the world who treated the queen simply as another human being, according to the monarch's former private secretary said. The duke's advice to the queen was candid and sometimes frank the kind of support that can only come from the person who knows you best. He was able to speak frankly, directly and in a way I think the Queen really appreciated, she said. He would go through her speeches with her before she gave them and I think she really relished the opportunity to hear someone tell her frankly their opinions, when so many of those she comes into contact with are obviously full of deference. For someone so watched and so revered, the Queen will surely miss that intimacy. A charismatic figure famed for his deep sense of public duty, Prince Philip was the longest serving consort of any British monarch, after his marriage to Her Majesty in 1947, and her accession to the throne in 1952. The Queen paid tribute to Prince Philip, he is someone who doesn't take easily to compliments but he has, quite simply, been my strength and stay all these years. Given Prince Philip's role in supporting their queen over more than seven decades of marriage, his biographer Giles Brandreth wrote, the joint author of that success has been the Duke of Edinburgh. Queen Elizabeth, a very private person not given to extravagant displays of affection, once called him her rock in public. In private, Philip called his wife Lilibet, but he referred to her in conversation with others as the queen. There was an epic love story spanning decades, which started as a wartime romance. While Prince Philip may not have been entirely comfortable about taking a secondary role to his wife, he did so without public complaint. Behind the scenes he was the family patriarch, making key decisions, such as where the children would go to school, or suggesting participation in documentaries to demystify the family for the public. More recently, he worked to handle family crises. Prince Philip was the only person that the Queen could be normal with and they were captured from time to time sharing a laugh together. Even their children have to follow royal protocols, acknowledging her position with a bow or curtsy when seeing her. The news of Prince Philip's passed away was met with an outpouring of tributes from around the world, including messages from every living US president and other world leaders. Today. Princess Anna has stepped out for the first time since her father Prince Philip passed away last week. Princess Anne has returned to work today by visiting the Royal Yacht Squadron in Cowes, on the Isle of Wight. Anne, 70, dressed in black and in sunglasses, arrived at the Royal Yacht Squadron, a sailing club in Cowes on the Isle of Wight. She met with members of the Royal Yacht Squadron, the prestigious club Prince Philip had been an admiral of. The 70-year-old spoke fondly of her links and early memories of sailing at the West Cows based club, and took time to speak to senior members and a group of aspiring young sailors. My father has been my teacher, my supporter and my critic, but mostly it is his example of a life well lived and service freely given that I most wanted to emulate, Anne, the Princess Royal, said in a statement on Sunday. We will miss him but he leaves a legacy which can inspire us all. 
Thank you for watching our video. Please support growing channel by subscribe channel and like video ah. And don't forget activate notifications to channel to always get the latest news. If you have any problems with the information in the video, please write a comment below to let us know and answer.